Right, in this video we'll be taking a look at Bode Linux version 2. So it's a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu 12.04. Now it's not just your average oh, lob on a fancy wallpaper and install a bunch of applications that no one ever needs type of distro. No, what this is is like a completely different system. So it uses the E17 desktop. In terms of lightness, it's about as light as LXDE. In terms of being fancy, it's beyond what KDE can manage. So what you've got is a ridiculously lightweight system that is really fancy and very pretty. So if I just left click on desktop there, bring up this menu, I'll take a quick look at the themes. Well, I've got a few extras installed. So you know, get a completely different look there. You've got the changes background, changes desktop wallpaper, and even like the menu bars there, and launcher. So I'll just grab one more to look at. So yeah, grab that one. Yeah, see, all looks very nice. But what you can also do in this system is use different profiles. So I'll go over here to settings and profiles. And I'm going to use the compositing desktop. But you could also go for like you've got des normal desktop type, laptop, netbook, bare, tablet, tiling. Yeah, now I'll go for compositing desktop. So this is one I set up earlier just to make it look a bit more like Ubuntu, and that's the style that I'm used to. So you get very little in Bode Linux. All it comes with is Midori Web Browser, File Manager, Terminal, and Synaptic. And that's about it, really. You can't build up the system yourself. So I've got the Run Everything launcher here. Ah, this is a brilliant thing. This is like using GNOME Do or the Unity launcher. So I'll type in the application I want. So say I want to open up press, start typing it, and there you are, you can open it up. The opening times are pretty quick. Just minimise that. And look at the system monitor. There you are, 286 meg RAM used. Wow, that is it. So you could have a system with 500 meg RAM, and you probably even get away with 256 meg RAM as well. I'm sure it used to be lighter in the older version, but no, I'm not complaining. And for the first time in Bodhi now, you get the option of a 64-bit download. So yeah, all the memory I've allocated it is instantly recognised. So that's great. So let's take a bit more of a look around the system. You do require a bit of prior knowledge about Linux to get Bodhi set up properly. You need to at least know what sort of applications you would like. They do make it a bit easier for you. So if you open up Midori, it takes you straight to the website. They've provided a nice guide on using the system. And I've also provided some links to install software and some common software requests. So if you decide you might like, oh, let's put Samba on here for instance. So click that. You've got the Samba file sharing support. And you can just click on install now. Pop in your admin password. There you go, it automatically installs it. Sounds great. It does make it a lot easier to use the system. There's a lot more I could do with the Run Everything launcher. Uh, pff, God, I don't know, there's, there's so much here really, and it's, looking, it's a very powerful looking tool. So we can look a bit further at the theme options in Bodhi. As I mentioned, there are quite a variety to choose from. If you decide you don't like one individual component of the theme, you can go in Advanced. So, you know, I could decide I want a different border for this theme. So we just go Assign, then select, I don't know, we'll go for that one. Apply. There you are, now I've got a different border at the top. There's one problem with this though, you can't move the Close, Minimise and Maximise buttons. There's only one theme that enables them to be on the left. I think it was the Moon OS theme, and I don't particularly like that theme. Which is pity, because that is one deal breaker on this operating system. If it wasn't for that, I would actually use Bodhi as my main operating system and replace Ubuntu. So it's a shame really. But yeah, there's an awful lot you can do with Bodhi, which is quite amazing for such a lightweight system. And here's what I thought of Bodhi Linux. So, easy to use. Well, not brilliantly, because it's more suited to power users, but they've actually provided a lot of information and features on the website to sort of get you more up and running easier. So that kind of makes up for it a bit, really. So, ease of installation. Well, you've got the GUI installer, so yeah, it's pretty easy to install and be able to dual boot it with Windows or another Linux distro. So, styling. Looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, customization is 
quite a lot you can customise in Bodhi Linux. Uh, boot up speed, yeah, very quick. Number of bugs, well, I did find one. Synaptic search doesn't always work. And annoyingly, by the time I came to do this review, it was working, so I didn't show that. Uh, selection of pre-installed apps. Well, <laughs> on one hand I would give it 5 out of 5 here, on the other hand I could give it nothing. But I've kind of gone for halfway between, because although there are hardly any applications pre-installed, it's actually good for power users. Uh, selection of apps available. Uh, they've added a repository and they've got a really good selection of uh, applications available, so that you wouldn't always get in Ubuntu. Uh, so 32 and 64-bit versions, yep, for the first time now they have provided both the 32 and 64-bit. That's excellent. So the good points, yeah, it's a fantastic looking lightweight system and it's a great distro for power users. There's not many Ubuntu-based distros that are good for power users. But the bad points, oh, this is it for me, this is the deal breaker. The lack of themes that can have the close, minimise, maximise buttons move to the left hand side. Sorry, that's the way it is for me. I've got used to it in Ubuntu with them being on the left, so it's now confusing for me to use the system when I'm on the right. And you do need some prior knowledge of Linux to be able to choose the necessary applications. Like, I don't know, for instance, if you wanted, say, a sound manager, would you necessarily know to go and install Pulse Audio or Alsa? There you go. So some prior knowledge is quite useful there. But yeah, overall, 88%. I do think this is a very good distro, but as I said, more ideal for power users rather than new users. So, thanks for watching, see you later.